Oh. It's my pollinator. If you don't like bugs, don't don't improve the land because you get a lot of different insects. You start with the little things and then it keeps growing up and up and up and then pretty soon you have your mule deer populations are where you want them and the birds have enough to eat and sage grouse numbers are flourishing again. Very few people are in control of 350,000 acres. You start to see a decision that one person makes that's conveyed to a small crew and they accomplish it and you see the results. It just starts to pique your interest. The building right behind you here, that's where we lived. There were 13 horse mowers at one time, and two tractors, and about five hay rakes, and a couple buck rakes bunching hay. Yeah, it's me. 1938. Quite an old time picture. The old stone building back here is built in 1942. And we didn't have running water or electricity here on the ranch until then. Other than that, growing up was about the same, I guess. Getting in trouble, raising hell around the ranch. We were all over the place. Humans have evolved a lot in our grazing since European settlement here. I think they just kind of opened the gate and let the cows go out and go wherever they wanted. And uh, cows don't like being out in the heat, just like people, so they'd congregate along the, the stream course all summer long. With that, you see these ecosystems start to tip and go down. That's the picture taken from the dam in the late 1800s. That's as far back as the late 1800s that it already looked in the condition it's in in that photo. Nobody realized the long-term damage that they were doing. My name's John Elliott. I was recently retired from the Nevada Department of Wildlife. Spent most of my career actually surveying, inventory, managing lawn cutthroat trout. I've probably surveyed more of Lahan cutthroat trout streams in Nevada than anyone, and I've seen the worst and I've seen the best, and this was one of the worst. I actually look back on my old field trip reports. Every recommendation for streams in this basin was uh, improve the habitat by managing livestock better. Roth's family came in and Greg Simons came in in the early 2000s, they took over and, you know, I guess they, they had this goal, this vision of what it could look like, and, uh, and I think we're seeing that right now. Yeah, my name's Greg Simons. I was raised not too far north of here. In 1973, I was in the College of Natural Resources and I said I want to be a positive resource management example, i.e. make money while improving the land. Trying to do both at the same time is a lot tougher than trying to do one or the other. In 2003, we did an assessment 
We found that the range was run down and we found that the riparian areas were run down. I knew that if we could change the grazing, the riparian area would change because it has such high potential. It, it's got so much moisture in the ground that it would show first there. I'm Jesse Bratz. I'm the manager here at Humboldt Ranch. We've been here, my wife and my family and I, since 2007. Grazing properly is an extremely simple principle. Where do we graze? How long do we graze? Where do we rest? How long do we rest? We look at where did we graze last year, and if we grazed in May and June on the uplands, we need to make sure those plants fully grow back before we go back there. In the riparians, did we have hot season grazing somewhere? And if we did, we need to make sure those plants in that riparian zone fully grow back before we're back in there grazing again. When I first came here, you could just see a sprig of willow here and there. But because I had three decades of other experience doing this, I knew that it would explode. As soon as you could start getting water into the ground, wonderful things happen. Plants start happening, butterflies start happening, your cow herd gets more fertile. If you start opening up this landscape into kind of a lifescape. Whoa, this is actually changing something. And in the case of the riparians, it's changing it quick because there's water in the system. This stretch of water behind us never had cutthroat trout in it. They couldn't stay in here. The water would get up to 80 degrees. Um, suitable water temperatures for cutthroat is 60 and below. After 20 plus years of good grazing management, this pool right behind me, we, we saw four or five big cutthroat in it. We're on Fraser Creek here. It's a really small system. We're in the third year of severe drought here in Nevada and most of the West. We are still seeing life and green things growing. We're still having live water on most of these riparians. Places where 20 years ago there would not have been water still running. Agencies have been very supportive and there's people within the Bureau of Land Management that have seen the results of what we've done and are willing to work with us and say, yes, we like this, this is right, this is what we want to see more of. And what's really neat about ranching is if you start improving the land's ability to grow life, then that improves the wildlife and the cattle and the fertility of animals and just basically the happiness factor of the landscape. Most life thrives on diversity. You have these insect layers and then you have these bird layers and that just keeps building on itself all the way through. You know, filling these riparians in with willows is just one step in succession. And now beavers come in and it starts to create the next successionary state. The good thing about the beaver is that they are part of the water security system. The water keeps rising and getting closer and closer to the surface, and so now we have water in places that there wasn't water. Oh wow, there's one of our friends right there. It's just a whole different operation now that I was used to. Jesse has made improvements here that I didn't think could be made. I didn't think it would ever look that good again. Having historical perspective through Les and John and Greg, it, it drives that point home of this wasn't always like this. This wasn't always better. This didn't have green stuff in it 30 years ago. This was rock and cut bank. It's an awakening call to see what can happen 
because in those days you didn't know what it could look like. You thought, well, that's the way it's always looked, that's the way it will look. There is an immense amount of joy in being tied to a land that is improving. Trying to understand what a person can do within their lifetime to either make change or a difference. People in agriculture are in a very unique position to do it at a really large scale. It takes a lot of perseverance to get something done like what has happened here. This was not overnight. This was 20 some odd years. If we have more you know, real success stories like this and get it out there, it doesn't have to be an anomaly. You know, this, this can happen range wide, it really can. When we can start having that freedom to think beyond our own fences and beyond our own paradigms, that's when we're really gonna start seeing landscapes change at scale.